if a 15 year old goes out and kills somebody, they will have a debate as to whether or not to try him as an adult or to think of him as a minor when they go through that trial. I'm actually okay with there being a slightly different standard if that happened, because, you know, we acknowledge that there is a difference in the moral reasoning of somebody who is not of the age of consent versus somebody who is a full-fledged adult and a member of society and able to make those kinds of decisions. Hey, fellow tacticians. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. So let's go ahead and look at argument 11. This is one that you don't hear super often, but I heard it and because it's a little bit unusual, I figured I'd go ahead and cover it just in case somebody tries to pull this one out on you. Uh, you're ruining young girls' lives that aren't even old enough to consent to sex. So in other words, and, and I actually do understand kind of the basis of this one, I don't agree with it, obviously, but kind of like the violinist one, I understand the basis of it because it's a, it's basically a back doorway into getting into the, uh, the rape, uh, conversation, the one that we covered in the last special. So it's a back doorway to get into that because a lot of the women, they say that are obtaining abortions are ones that are actually too young to consent to sex. And so because of that, you're dealing with something of statutory rape, and therefore it's wrong for you when they couldn't consent, even if they said that they consented, they were too young to actually give consent for sexual activity. And therefore, if they didn't really understand that, they're too young for that. And, and because of that, they should be able to obtain an abortion. So I at least understand the basis of this argument. So let's go ahead and uh, point out that they always try to point to the most sympathetic case in order to justify the whole. So just like the rape argument that we covered in the last one, my first question to that person would be, okay, so are you in favor of outlawing all abortions that don't involve somebody that was under the age of sexual consent? And about 99% of the time they'll say, well, no. And I say, okay, then we're wasting our time talking about it because that's not really what your argument is. You're trying to present a sympathetic case that most people would relate to and have a certain amount of compassion for and use that as a wedge to get everything that you want, which is abortion on demand for a lot of people. Uh, certainly a lot of the people that are in the Democrat leadership. If you're talking to one of your friends or neighbors, that's probably not actually their goal. But regardless, they're trying to justify all of the cases and justify keeping it legal for everybody just based on a handful of very rare sympathetic cases. And you might say, well, is it really that rare? It seems like there's a lot of young women that are getting abortions because of that. Well, again, my answer to pretty much everything, well, let's actually go back and look at the numbers when the numbers are in dispute. So we'll go ahead and look at this from uh, Gut Muncher. Um, the Gut Muncher group is wildly pro-abortion. Their whole organization exists specifically to promote abortion and quote unquote, preserve abortion rights. Therefore, when they're giving you these numbers, it ain't because they're conservative. It's not because they're pro-life. The exact opposite is true. However, these are their numbers that they're using, and they use a sample size from 2014 and 2008 on the women that are actually getting abortions. So for the women that are the age 15 and under, less than 15, you're talking about in 2014, 0.2 and 0.4. So not even close to 1%. You can't even round up to 1% on that. And then on those that are over 15, but under the age of 18, under the age of majority, so 15 to 17, that's 3.4 and 6.1. Now you'll notice, A, that in all of these years for the younger women that's dropping, I don't know if that's because of birth control or whatever other number of factors may be playing into it, but regardless, not only is that number already pretty low, but it's shrinking. So they, they like you to believe that most abortions are just some poor 15 or 16 year old girl that didn't know what she was doing and got caught up in this, uh, maybe got caught up in the heat of the moment or didn't really consent, but kind of did. And because of that, they're getting abortions. Actually, you're still dealing with 90% of women over the age of 18 when you're talking about this number. You're still talking about the vast, vast majority of cases if that rule were implemented and you eliminated abortions for everybody that fell outside of that, 
you would be getting rid of well over 90% of abortion. So the vast majority of people getting abortions are well over the age of consent. That's just what the numbers say. Uh, this trend, again, is on the decrease, but even the 2008 numbers that were slightly larger are still very, very low. And if that trend continues, and we can assume that it has, we're looking at 2014 numbers where the, the numbers have been cut in half. So if that trend continues, we're currently almost 10 years away from the 2014 mark. It would be safe to assume, even though you have a law of diminishing returns, that that number has decreased substantially even since then. I don't have the numbers for the most recent year, but if the trend holds, that would be the case. And we're probably looking at even below 2% of those abortions now. But here's another thing to consider. Let's look at the actual age of consent by age, because we tend to think of the age of consent as being 18. But the truth is, that's not always the case. By the way, if you're wondering why I have a map of the age of consent, don't worry. I looked at this map specifically for this segment. I did not know this before then. In fact, I was kind of stunned to find out that the age of consent in Alabama was 16. I assumed it was 18. Uh, but regardless, this is... <laughs> How much do you want to bet that Joe Biden has this map up in his office? <laughs> uh, Trump really missed out with calling him Crooked Joe instead of Pedo Joe, which his uh, son Hunter called him in an email once. Uh, I mean, it's, I c could you just see Trump right now as a... Pedo Joe, Pedo Joe, they call him. He's sniffing little girl's hair, Pedo Joe. Um, that would have been phenomenal. But anyway, the goofiness aside, this is the actual age of consent per state. And what you will notice is 32 of the states, well over half, place it at 16. And eight of them place it at 17. Which means that of the 50 states, 40 of them, have the age of consent under 18. Now, you can agree or disagree with that. Frankly, I think it probably should be 18 nationwide. I'd be fine with that. But regardless, that is the way that it is legally. And so when they make this argument that you're, you're dealing with women that are, you know, all these women that you would be banning from abortion, they're actually too young to consent anyway. And so they are effectively statutorily raped. Well, actually, if you look at the numbers, that's a very, very small percent of the women that are actually achieving abortions or actually obtaining abortions. Sorry, I should say. It's a very, very small percentage of the women that are 15 to 17 or 15 and under. And then you would decrease that substantially if you actually dug into those numbers and excluded only the women that were the age of consent, because the vast majority of states, the age of consent is actually 16. So you would basically only be dealing with the 15-year-olds and the under-15 crowd, which would probably make up less than 1% or 2%. So again, they're trying to justify the whole by using a tiny, tiny sympathetic minority to justify all of the rest of them. But even if they could get their way on that, you would still be eliminating well over 95% of all of the abortions in this country. So ultimately... That's not really a substantial, that, that's not really a credible argument. Um, on top of that, it's essentially the same thing with the rape and the incest argument. You, you would have to ask them, like I said, uh, if they'd be okay with outlawing all abortions. But let's go to the moral argument for a second. First of all, why would you being younger, even if we concede to their argument and ignored the other 98% that would be outlawed if you agreed to that standard? Let's go to the moral argument of specifically these women. Why would being younger justify you taking the life of another person? Think about that. Really, like, mull over it. Why would that be understandable? You see, first of all, that creates a problem because if you're going to allow abortions just for those that are underage and under the age of consent, that's going to be super helpful for sex traffickers. In fact, just here in, in Montgomery that didn't, I mean, now they couldn't do that because abortion is outlawed in the state. But even here in the city of Montgomery, there was a guy that took a 13-year-old to get two abortions, no questions asked. And it turns out he was the person that was pimping out this 13-year-old girl and having her get an abortion when she was, when she was impregnated by the, pe by the people that he was having come over and have sex with her. Now, that's a level of evil on a whole other plane of existence. But even if you take the, the morality out of that, 
it illustrates exactly how easy it would be if that's the only people that are allowed to have abortions, you'd actually be doing a huge favor to the people that are trafficking these under underage girls and trying to get them to have sex with as many people as possible. And when they do get pregnant, abort them so that they can go and sell them more. That's a huge problem within the abortion industry. And anybody that's honest on the right or left, even people that support abortion will tell you that if they actually look at the numbers and look at it objectively. Furthermore, let's look at the legal argument. I'm actually okay with handling minor abortions slightly differently than abortions from women that are over the age of consent. Now, you might be saying, whoa, Caleb, are you, are you actually saying you're okay with them aborting? No, 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 I didn't say that. But if we're going to make it a legal penalty and they obtained an abortion illegally, because it's still never right to take somebody's life, regardless of the circumstances surrounding that life. But if they were able to obtain it illegally, I would actually be okay with there being a lesser sentence for somebody who's a minor. In the same way, if a 15-year-old goes out and kills somebody, they will have a debate as to whether or not to try him as an adult or to think of him as a minor when they go through that trial. I'm actually okay with there being a slightly different standard if that happened because you know, we acknowledge that there is a difference in the moral reasoning of somebody who is not of the age of consent versus somebody who is a full-fledged adult and a member of society and able to make those kinds of decisions. So as far as the, the criminal penalty side of it, I would actually be okay with considering those differently. I don't think that you should be able to obtain a, an abortion just because you're younger. In the same way, I don't think you should just be able to, oh, he's 15 years old and only has his learner's permit. Yeah, he can run over that guy. It's no big deal. Like you shouldn't permiss that. <laughs> You shouldn't allow them to do it, but if they do wind up in that situation, I do think that you could actually consider it slightly differently, at least from a legal perspective. And in that same sense, if a minor is involved in a crime and a person that is not a minor helped them, you can actually give a harsher sentence to the adult for aiding and abetting them in that particular crime. It's contributing to the delinquency of a minor, and there's, there's other legal precedents that you could use for that as well. And so in the same sense, let's say that a 15-year-old goes out and gets an abortion from a back alley doctor after abortion's been outlawed, and that state prosecutes that person. I am okay with considering the girl in that scenario as a minor and giving her a lesser sentence or trying to put her back on the right track for her life and actually greatly increasing the penalty for that doctor because he took advantage of a minor in the process of doing that. That standard I'm actually okay with. You shouldn't permiss it. But if it happens anyway, the way that you deal with it in the criminal justice system, I'm okay with taking that into consideration. But even if you ignore all of this, why would we even assume that killing the baby is what's actually most beneficial for the girl? That's the thing that always bothered me about this argument that the assumption is, well, what's actually better for this young girl that has been statutorily raped is to go ahead and kill the baby. So your plan is to make her a murderer on top of being a rape victim? That doesn't seem like a good psychological combination to me. And I'm not saying that she has to raise the baby. She could put it up for adoption. You know, uh, I, I could see something like that happening and that that may be what is best for her uh, and best for the baby in that case. But killing the baby doesn't seem to me to be a, a particularly good or helpful uh, course of action to take in that situation. Like it's going to leave psychological scars. She'll always wonder about that baby. She'll always think about that baby. And so because of that, that just, I mean, that just seems to be injuring the girl more instead of actually helping her. I am sympathetic to a person in that situation, but that doesn't mean that killing the baby is the right course of action. In fact, I would say pushing abortion on a young girl like that who is scared and is in a bad situation and knowing that there's going to be consequences for that later on, I would say that's actually psychological extortion. That You're actually going to be pressuring her into doing something she'll regret later. And that's actually worse for the girl, making uh, or basically motivating her to do that. And furthermore, you have to remember that the baby didn't consent to be there either. And so you come back to the whole uh, rape and incest debate because ultimately the baby didn't do anything wrong. You don't take out, because of the evil actions of one person, you don't take that action out and take out the consequences of that action on an innocent bystander in that situation. Ultimately, though, the rebuttal is, why would you make a girl that is too young to consent to sex a murderer? 
I agree with you that there's a problem that if she's too young to make decisions about her sexuality and too young to make the decision to get pregnant, I agree with the premise of that argument. Where I disagree with it is the conclusion that the best thing for her would be to allow her to make a decision that she, again, as a young person, is not mentally, emotionally equipped to handle. That's actually the worst thing that you could do for her. And so because of that, I think that the proper response is to allow nature to take its course. Of course, you know, if she's medically capable of doing that, and, and of course there should be doctors involved in all of that, and I, and I understand that. Medical reasons is a different rationale. But, you know, if, if that is the case and she meets those qualifications and allowing her to go through that process is actually going to be much better for her in the long term. And so my sympathy for her is there, but it actually leads me to the opposite conclusion. <laughs> If you're watching this because you liked this video, awesome. Be sure to like and subscribe and click that little notification bell. If you're a leftist that's only here to hate watch, hang on before you punch that dislike button. You see, I identify as a Hispanic woman, so if you dislike this video, that's literally violence against me and you are now guilty of a hate crime. Why do you hate beautiful trans people of color like me? What you gonna do now, Woke Brigade?